it's M here with another book review again in the fireplace room because they are still putting like the roof shingles on that extension that they've added to the neighbor's house and so there's some hammering but anyway today I wanted to talk about Once Upon a K-Prom by Kat Cho which is my first net galley outing. Um, I have used Edelweiss in the past uh, to get preview books, um, but I was, you know, um, fortunate enough to be offered to read this upcoming uh, teen rom-com via NetGalley, so I'm over there now, uh, <laughs> and thanks again to Disney Hyperion and NetGalley for giving me the chance to read this book in advance of its publication next month, May 2022. Uh, so this book is, it's a teen, you know, YA, I want to say rom-com. It's about uh, a high school senior named Elena who is more interested in saving the local community center than going to prom. Elena's best friend, childhood friend, Robbie, moved away when they were 10 and, um, they had made a promise to go to prom together, but he moved away to Seoul. Um, Seoul? Seoul? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I'm saying it correctly. Uh, it, it became this, like a member of a, a big K-pop, popular K-pop band. So uh, she lost touch with him and she thinks about him on and off but she kind of even though she likes k-pop she kind of doesn't listen to their band maybe i mean there's some complicated feelings there i can imagine they're not super well expressed but i'm not sure that anybody in that situation would necessarily be able to express why they would or wouldn't listen to a band that their ex-best friend was a popular member of i i don't know <laughs> um anyway Robbie shows up, this is not a spoiler, Robbie shows up to try to take her to prom and make good on this promise. They haven't even, you know, seen each other in seven years and <clears throat> she, um, she's like, I'm not even planning to go to prom, I'm trying to do this other thing. And it goes from there. Um, it's a really cute book. Uh, I actually really enjoyed reading it and it was a very fast read it was now what I read was an uncorrected galley so there were some formatting issues and it definitely the version I read needed a really good edit because there were a lot of, okay so here's the thing that's kind of weird about it the Elena chapters are in first person past tense and then the Robbie chapters there are only a few but they are in third person past tense, which I thought was a little strange, but I have this peeve as an editor where um, when you're writing in past tense, but sometimes people uh, use pre some present tense verbiage outside of dialogue. Like it's fine if somebody says, well, yesterday you said this or whatever, that makes sense because, but when you're writing past tense, here's my little, here's my little editing writing lecture. Um, you can't use present tense verbiage in your prose. You can't say now this or, you know, last night that because those are present tense markers. They mark a, a present tense time. So you have to say the night before and you have to say at that moment or, you know, like you, you can't, it's nudgy and I realize I'm old, very old school and maybe these these things are getting a little bit looser, but it bothers me. And this uncorrected version of the book had a lot of it. So that was problematic for me, but that's a very like, <laughs> that's a very much an editing me thing. The story itself was really cute. Uh, it, it, you know, it reminded me a lot of You Should See Me in a Crown in that there's this main character who doesn't like being the center of attention, but finds themselves in a situation where they become the center of attention. 
and you know um although of course this this book is aggressively heteronormative um there are no there's no representation of like an lgbtq you know aspect uh the the main characters are korean which is nice there's a lot of cool korean like culture and words and stuff um in there that's that was interesting uh so yeah, I mean, Elena had moments where she was super annoying, which I think is pretty typical of a YA main character. Uh, there were definitely times where I was like, what are you doing? Like, why would you do that? But what I found refreshing was that at various points in the narrative, Elena gets called out on some of her behavior and like people around her say, you know, you said this thing or you did this thing and you know the way I perceived it was as this whereas Elena was like oh all these people have wronged me well these people eventually are able to say to Elena well no the way from where my standpoint you wronged me by doing this and Elena has to stop and kind of rethink um her you know uh, this this you know she she kind of has to try and and see things from other people's point of view. And I found that kind of a refreshing um, little bit of character arc construction. Um, it does read a little bit fanficy, not bad fanfic, but there's definitely the the sense of inserting, yeah, you know, because you're reading Elena's POV in the first person, it's very much, they're definitely like, oh, and then I got to go hang out with famous k-pop stars you know and oh you know and that kind of thing um so there's a little bit of self-insertion feel to what's going on there but um but you know i mean i've written fan fiction i've read my share of fan fiction if this started as fan fiction and i don't know i don't think so because i think the author has written other ya um but but who knows uh then you know it it was good fan fiction and then clearly it got adapted you know oh what if one of my best friends was actually a k-pop star and then he came to take me to prom and i got to meet all his bandmates and i became like this special person i don't know <laughs> i don't know it's not a dream i ever had so <laughs> i'm sorry like i'm losing my voice so if i'm a little bit that's why um but yeah I put like a, a much longer review on Goodreads if you want to go read it, but I just wanted to make a quick video here um, to talk about it uh, since it was something that I got like in advance to read and wanted to kind of spread the word a little bit about it. Uh, I, instead, it seems like instead of doing <clears throat> a monthly wrap up, I'm just kind of going book by book. Uh, the other book I've just finished is Heiresses, and I'll ta I will talk about that in the wrap-up for the month. I'm hoping to get at least one or two more books read before the end of the month, and then we can talk about those down the line. But anyway, that is Once Upon a K-Prom by Kat Cho. I gave it 3.8, uh, assuming that those editing things get fixed. Um, it's, yeah, it's definitely solidly 3.8 to 4-ish stars it's a it's a you know it was it was a fun read um if they don't fix that past present stuff and i don't know if they will i mean i honestly don't know uh then it's for me because that is for me like almost a deal breaker it'd be more like 3.5 3.6 um it would definitely detract a bit from the story but cute overall and there goes the neighbor's dog so that's my cue to be done I'll see you next time.